Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are in now episode 7 of our series Getting the Best Out of Ramadan. And in this episode, we're looking at principle number 6. And this principle is basically fasting, not feasting. To distinguish between the cultural feasting of Ramadan and the prescribed fasting of Ramadan. If we look at the principles which the Prophet ﷺ left with us, if we just stick with those basic principles, beginning with suhoor, of course suhoor is important, we should delay it. Not eating suhoor in the middle of the night where we uh, fill ourselves up or before we start the fast, we eat three course meals, etc. So we come into the fast fully loaded. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? He said, Ni'ma suhoor al mu'min tamru. The best suhoor, the best that we can use for suhoor, if we are true believers, is tamar, dates. Most people know about breaking the fast with dates, yes. We all heard about it. The Prophet ﷺ had said, إِذَا أَفْطَرَ أَحَدُكُمْ فَلْيُفْتِرْ عَلَىٰ تَمْرٍ if any of you breaks his or her fast, they should do so with dates. So we know about breaking the fast with dates. Everybody knows that. But ni'ma suhoor, the best suhoor, this one most people don't know about at all. So if we enter into the fast with only three or five dates and water, or juice or something like this the fast is going to be a different fast the fast is supposed to have on one level a sense of empathy for those who are suffering starving hungry not because they decided to fast but because they have no food to eat this is we know part of the purpose of the fast. To give us that sense of connection with them. We understand what it means to feel hunger pangs, pains in our stomachs because of no food. But now if we ate that huge suhoor, three course, fully loaded, then we are going to be digesting our food all morning till Dhuhr carrying on to Asr and maybe halfway to Maghrib the digestion process is complete and our stomachs are now emptying and now it's time for the Adhan of Maghrib time to break the fast but we didn't experience any hunger in this fast. We didn't experience any hunger because our bodies, our systems were digesting the whole time. And that's why we have a reputation for gaining kilos in Ramadan. People, non-Muslims, question us how. You know, we tell them fasting is easy, no problem. We gain weight in Ramadan. I say, well, how? How is that? How can you gain weight while fasting? Because we're eating huge suhoor. Then when we break the fast, okay, we eat a few days. And right at the same time, before we even go to pray, we're, you know, starting on a main meal. We end up delaying maghrib, many of us. Pray maghrib late because of that huge meal that we have set ready to attack as soon as we break fast. Eat the, 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 the dates that we're breaking fast with, it's just for show. Yeah, yeah, we're supposed to break with dates. So we date three dates, finish, and then we jump into the food. That's not what it's supposed to be. 
We're supposed to break the fast with those dates, then water, make our dua, go and pray. And after we pray, because this is all control, the test of the fast is at the time of breaking the fast. It's also at the time of starting the fast. If we can't control ourselves, you know, from gorge and gorging ourselves with food immediately after breaking our fast, then it means we didn't learn the lessons of self-control. And if you can't control what you're eating, then you know so many other things you lose control over. So we have to get back to the spirit of fasting. Put feasting aside. Okay, eat. That's the Eid. After Ramadan's over, we have the Eid feast. But Ramadan, iftar, is not supposed to be a feast. But that's what we turn it into. We'll have all kinds of food, tons of food there. So we lost the spirit. And we have retained the ritual. So if we are to get the best, we have to put in our best. We need to reduce our suhoor. Don't eat after midnight. After, after we eat after Isha, we had our dinner, so and so. Maybe you have something light later. Whatever, you go to sleep. Get up for Fajr. Before Fajr, you have your suhoor. Make it three dates, five dates, some water. That's it, enough. Try that. Try that this Ramadan. You've never tried it before. You never had an idea that you're supposed to be doing this. This is preferable. It's not compulsory. It's not to say if you want to eat a whole chicken for your sahur that Islam says haram. No, it doesn't say haram. But you have to put these things in their proper context. You have to know what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be fasting. So inshallah, I hope this thought about fasting will help us to get on track. To bring actually, this is the physical aspects of the fast intact. It's not the solution for all of our problems, but it is an aspect of fasting that we must take care, proper care of. Inshallah, may Allah accept the rest of our fast according to the prescribed way, according to the recommendation of the Prophet. Barakallah fikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.